As usual on this show, some of the best uh, discussion happens uh, off air. So Gary, uh, I'm going to pass the baton to you. You were making a point off air about uh, how how tough it is uh, if you don't have the right approval uh, strategy. Well, that's right. And I, I think it's important to note that uh, the you know, Bill C-69, the, the Impact Assessment Act, has been taken to the Supreme Court of Canada, uh, where the case has been heard, I think it was heard in March of this year. The decision should be rendered uh, sometime this summer. Um, there's really, uh, regardless of what the Supreme Court decides on whether it is constitutional legislation or not, or whether it's constitutional in part and not constitutional in other parts, uh, the bottom line is that the legislation will need to be changed. The regulations will need to be changed uh, in order to make it workable. Um, right now, uh, there's really three things, I think, that are the, the, the key points. One is there are too many people that have standing uh, to make uh, you know, uh, interventions into the review process. And the consequence is, is that you end up with you know, a wide range of people who may be focused um, on a, a pipeline that goes to the west coast of Canada, um, you know, that are making submissions that come from, you know, uh, Quebec, Ontario, and other parts of the country. Um, the second piece is that the timelines, you need to have a shot clock. When is 180 days, not 180 days uh, for making a decision? It's when it ranges into two or 300 days. And uh, so there needs to be a shot clock that gives uh, you know, certainty uh, to proponents of a project to say, we can get this done within a certain period of time. And the third thing is ministerial discretion. Uh, ministerial discretion uh, is now being used as, you know, a political process that should, uh, should be not used when we're talking about, um, you know, uh, infrastructure projects that are considered to be in the national interest. Uh, you, you should not be able to use a ministerial discretion uh, haphazardly. Um, and the result of all of this is not that you end up with better projects being made, uh, you end up with no projects being made. And I think that uh, for uh, some of the interveners in this process, that's exactly what they want and exactly the reason why uh, we, can't, uh, we can't get things done, can't get things built here in Canada. Joe Oliver, uh, you tried you tried very hard to make this uh, uh, this jurisdiction Canada uh, friendly for these kinds of uh, projects, but at the same time respecting uh, environmental concerns, et cetera. Is, is there any hope that we can get to a better place on this? Well, the reason that uh, the the federal liberals are now talking about a, a, a less draconian and less hostile review process, is that they're thinking about the mining companies and particularly uh, the rare earth companies that are producing the ingredients necessary for some of these uh, green uh, technologies to proceed. And they realize that if they can't get uh, those projects moving, then their, their whole uh, green energy uh, uh, initiative will become even more uh, uh, delusional. So it's not that they've all of a sudden decided, uh, let's accelerate oil and gas projects. No, it's because they're looking much more narrowly at their, their climate change agenda. And that's why she's talking about that. But she did talk in generic terms. So, you know, if, if the overall process, you know, improves or becomes less draconian, uh, maybe there's some hope. But right now, no, um, rational pipeline uh, sponsor would recommend uh, to, to would have its board recommend that uh, it go ahead because the risk is is just uh, is just too high so the government achieved its objectives uh, right. in in that regard but uh, they're they're looking at a somewhat different sector and that's why they they've shifted ground 